So welcome students to the lab video and today we are going to implement the stack data structure using array. So I am going to create a project, non-QT project, then click on plan C++ application, choose a meaningful name. So I'm going to say stack um, array implementation, click next couple of times and then finally click finish. So this is our code. I'm going to remove the command line arguments as usual because we are not going to need them. Remove the cout statement as well. And just above the main function, um, create a class. Let's call it array stack. And in the private section of the class, I'm going to create three data members. The first I'm going to call list, which is a po type pointer of type integer. And I've declared this particular pointer because I'm going to create a dynamic array and I'm going to store the address of the first location of that array in this pointer. So list will represent the array, right? And then I'm going to create a top pointer, a top variable of type integer, which represent the top of the stack. And finally, I'm going to create a variable called capacity, um, which is the maximum number of elements in the stack we can store. So let's create the public section of the class and I'm going to create a default constructor. So I'm going to stay array stack and I'm going to perform some initialization right here. So the first thing to do is to initialize the capacity and I'm going to initialize the capacity with some arbitrary number. Uh, let's say five. Uh, you could uh, initialize it with 10, 20 or 30. So there is uh, nothing, nothing significant about this number and then I'm going to create an array of heap and I'm going to specify the capacity for that array and if you put um, pair of parentheses then all the elements of the array will be initialized to the default values of the data type so all will be initialized with zero in this case but if it was um, of type string then uh, all the values will be initialized with empty string. And finally, I'm going to initialize the top to minus one, right? You might see some implementation on the internet where the top is initialized with zero. I argue that that is not the correct implementation because if we use the top as index to the array, so it's going to help us uh, in implementing some other member function, like for example, how do we know if the array stack object is empty. So if the value of the top is minus one, it means the array is empty because minus one is not a valid index and we are actually implementing the stack using arrays. So that's why I've taken the decision of initializing the top to minus one. So now let's implement the push member function. So I'm gonna type void push and it's gonna take an integer argument and insert that on top of the stack. So if I were to, before I implement this member function, I'm going to go down to the main function. I'm going to create the array stack object. And let's call it S. And what I want to do that the client has to call this member function on the S object and pass a value. And what we want to do, that value will be copied into this parameter. So element will contain the value 100 when this function gets called. And what we want to do, that we want to increment the value of the top by one because minus one is not a valid index. And array is a zero index based, so we have to say top plus plus, and that actually means top equals to top plus one. So the value of the top is minus one, minus one plus one equals to zero, which is the first index of the array. And we are going to insert at that index, the value element. That's it, right? Let's talk about the um, pop member function, which retrieves an element or removes an element from top of the stack. So the return type of this function is going to be int because it's going to return an integer value. And let's call it pop because that's the convention. And I'm going to create a temporary variable and I'm going to say whatever is the top value, 
I want to store that in the temporary variable and then I'm gonna um, actually put zero there just so that um, we don't mess things up so I'm gonna say list of top is equal to zero and then I'm gonna decrement the value of the top by minus one and then I'm gonna return temp right you might not see this step in some implementation but it's my argument that it is the more appropriate implementation because by putting zero there it means that that particular location um, has uh, no valid value so this is the implementation of the pop so less top means the top value on the stack will be stored in some temporary integer variable and we'll put zero there right because we already retrieve the value of the temp and then we reduce or decrement the value of the top by one and then we return temp so let's uh, test these two member functions so i've pushed 100 and then i'm going to push 200 and let's push one more and there's 300 so we inserted three values now if i call s dot pop the value we inserted last will be removed first remember that stack is based on last in first out <clears throat> so let's run this program to see if um, our implementation is correct and as you can see 300 has been removed from the stack because it was the top value and if i call pop again let me just uh, copy this two times so then the next value will be 200 and then the next value will be 100 so let's run this program again and as you can see we have the value 300 200 and then finally 100 so the two uh, fun member functions and the implementation is correct so far now let's implement the um, boolean or predicate member function uh, member function is uh, said to be predicate if it returns true or false so the return type of this function is going to be boolean and then we have to say if the top value equal to minus one that means the stack is empty so we return true else we return false so now let's uh, test this member function as well so before i push any item I'm going to call this as um, empty member function and if it returns true or implementation is correct so I'm going to say C out and because this returns an integer value that in C++ the zero represents the false value and one represents the true value so I'm going to convert that to the literally literal world true and false so I'm going to say bool alpha and then I'm going to say s dot empty and if it returns true um, that means the stack is empty and it has to return true at this point and as you can see before pushing any item we call the um, empty member function and it returns true now let's call this function after we push a value so I'm gonna call it right after I push 100 and let's run to see if it returns false and as you can see it returns false because we already pushed 300 right 100 sorry so our implementation is correct i'm going to comment this code because i'm going to test some other um, member functions so i'm going to comment it out also let's implement the full member function because we are implementing the stack using arrays and arrays of size a fixed size so we have to say bool full and how do we know if the um, if the uh, if the stack is full so simply we say if the top is equal to capacity we say return true but there is a problem with this implementation else return false let me just uh, talk about that when you insert five items into the array what will be the last index it has to be four and the capacity is five right so we have to compare capacity with top plus one so we have to just come here and say top plus one and then we we'll, we are comparing it with the capacity 
So if the value of the top is four, that means we have inserted five items because array is uh, zero index and uh, we had to what, add, what, uh, add one to it and then we compare it with the capacity. So let's try this. We have to insert two more items. So 400 and 500. Now at this point, the stack should be full. So I'm going to say bool alpha because it's a boolean member function s dot full. And if it returns true, then our implementation is going to be correct. And as you can see, it returns true, right? But if I call this uh, member function after pushing four items, there is there is still space for one more item. It has to return false and it returns false. Now let's talk about the um, uh, the peak member function I talked about in the lecture, which does not uh, remove an item from top, but just return the top value. So at any uh, given time, if the client want to know what is the top value of the stack, if the size of the stack is 1 billion, for example, uh, then we have to provide a member function for that. And it's going to return the integer value, which is the data type for the elements stored in the stack. And I'm going to call it peak by convention. And I'm going to simply return list.top. So whatever is the top value, it's going to return that. So in this case, uh, let's um, call this member function right here after pushing 500. 500 would be the top value. So I'm going to say s.peak and del. Now let's run the program and we should see 500 on screen. And here is the output. So what else can we do with the stack class? For example, the full member function, empty, peak, pop. Let's create a print member function, which is going to traverse the stack in last in first out manner. That means it has to print all the elements starting from the top value till the, la the first value. So I'm going to come here and re remember we don't want to remove it, but rather we just want to traverse. So I'm going to say void print stack and let's uh, create an integer variable called tem, which is going to get the value of the top for int i equals to temp and if i is greater than or equal to zero because uh, we are um, doing it in reverse order it's like a countdown loop we have to start from the top and top minus one then top minus one we will keep doing it as long as the value of i is equal to or greater than zero but not less than zero because um, it becomes invalid index for the array so i'm going to say i plus plus and then I'm going to simply say C out list of temp, uh, sorry, I. And then I'm going to append a space. And after we print all the values, I'm going to simply say end. So what this function is going to do, it's going to print or traverse the elements of the stack without removing it from the stack. So let's uh, call this, uh, let me comment out this line. And now I'm going to simply say s dot print stack and it should print the values in order 500, 400, 300, 200, and then 100. So let's run this program to see the output. And we get a bug, right? So we have to fix it. So let's cancel out from here. And the bug is in the print stack member function. And yes, we made a mis terrible mistake. We have to count down, not uh, adding, but rather decrement the value of the i by minus 1. So let's run this now. And as you can see, 500, 400, 300, 200, and 100. If we want to print this in a pretty uh, format, we can do something with the print member function. And I think I'm going to come here and say, see out, stack elements colon and then let me put a bracket as well and then semicolon and then I'm going to come here and 
close that particular bracket and then end up. So it's not gonna affect the functionality of the print stack, but rather it's gonna display it in a pretty pretty way. So let's run it again. And as you can see, stack elements are 500, 400, 300, 200, and 100. So that's it for the stack. And uh, if you can think of any other member function, you can ask me and I can then work on it and we'll implement it for you. So thanks for watching. See you next time.